Good evening. It being 7:15 on October 2nd, 2017, I'll call the October town meeting to order. At this point, I'll entertain a motion to admit Mr. Schultz. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I move to the following persons. Is this thing on back there? Is that better? No. like that commercial, can you hear me now? Mr. Moderator, I move that the following persons be admitted to the meeting. Elizabeth Rourke, Darren Klein, Maureen Doherty, Carol Ducro, Janet Murphy, Robert Williamson, uh, the following representatives from the town of Andover, uh, Selectman Paul Salafia, Selectman Laura Gregory, uh, Patrick Lawler, John Mangiardi, Chris Cronin, Andrew Flanagan, and the following persons from the town of Linfield, Trudy Reed, Gil Guglielmo, Richard uh, Reditano, Lori Pacino, Gary Hathaway, Bob McKendrick, Jack Adelson, Arthur Bork, also our student volunteers, Bridget McDonough, Samantha uh, Sturdivant, Abriana McCollum, Haley Diamond, Ashley Kaur. Also, we would like to uh, admit the following people, Allison Kane, Daniel McKnight, Amy Luckowitz, Matthew Cooper, Robert Williamson, uh, Robert Carbone, Jason Smith, Stephen Thomas, Debbie Carbone, Mary Ann McKay, Howard Miller, Andrew Lafferty, Michael Sorhegan, Sharon Kelleher, Mike Murphy, Maureen Stevens, Mark Clark, John Bernard, Kyle Mills, and Ben Tenney. On the motion to admit, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? While, while the guests enter the hall, I'll, I'll address some some business this evening. Um, first of all, should we need to have a hand count? The tellers for this evening are for the front section and to my left, Sean Delaney. For the center section, Jeff Simons. And to my right, Ed McGrath. All registered voters should be wearing a yellow ribbon. And all guests should be wearing a black visitor ribbon. I'd ask you all, please, at this time, to turn off your cell phone if it's not turned off already, or at least silence it. Microphones. The microphones this evening, we have two microphones in the aisles in the center. If you're willing and able to go to the microphone, I can recognize you from there. If you find that um, too much of a task, because these are uh, a lot of stairs here, so if you find that too much a task, please raise your hand or stand in place. When I recognize you, I will send one of the runners. We have student runners, two at the bottom and two at the top, to bring the microphone to you so that you may address the meeting. Speaking of addressing the meeting, I would ask that you wait till you're specifically called upon, state your name and address for the record, and most importantly, for everyone's benefit, we all need to stay on topic and speaking to the motion at hand, not other issues. I'd also like to thank the students this evening, Haley Diamond, Bridget McDonough, Samantha Sturdivant, Abriana McCollum, and Ashley Kaur for volunteering to help us. And on that note, I would ask uh, Mr. Prisco to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I would ask that we all remain standing after the Pledge of Allegiance for a moment of silence for the shootings that occurred yesterday in Las Vegas, Nevada. Mr. Prisco. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation.
Thank you, everyone. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to dispense with the reading of the warrant. Mr. Prisco. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move to dispense with the reading of the warrant and to refer to the articles by number and further to dispense with the reading of the return of service by the constable. We have the motion. Is there a discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? Article 1. Mr. O'Leary. Oh, on a motion to admit, Mr. O'Leary. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I move to admit Alan Kong, 7 Shady Hill Drive. We have a motion to admit. Any discussion? Seeing none, all of On the motion to admit any discussion, seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed? Aye. Unanimous? Just before we get to Article 1, if anybody needs a copy of the warrant, please raise your hand and we'll come down the aisle and get one to you. Article 1. Ms. Manipelli. Mr. Moderator, I move to hear reports of town officers and committees as may be presented at this meeting. We have the motion. There are some reports this evening. Economic Development Committee. Mr. Prisco. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Through the Economic Development Committee, tied with the CPC, we've been working on transportation opportunities for the town. So I just want to take this opportunity tonight just to go through a couple slides related to the transportation service that we're trying to get on board here in the town with the Merrimack Valley Regional Transportation Authority. So you can see the slide up here. Make sure it's up there. Good. I'm just going to run through this really quick to give you an, up, an update on where we are now with this opportunity. So we are going to execute it. We're going to start it in the month of October, and I'll get to that in the last slide. But I just wanted to give you just sort of a summary of how the program is going to work. We are going to host some workshops. We're going to host a day up at the Senior Center. We're going to give an opportunity for folks to come in and ask questions and learn about how it works, the process. So it's going to be for residents who are 60 years of age or older. It's going to be for our disabled vets, no age restriction. And it's only going to be for medical appointments for now. We want to start slow and see how the program works, see how many people take, out, take advantage of the opportunity to use the service. It is a service of origin, from the origin to the destination, and then return. It's a shared ride, so you may not be the only one on that bus coming from North Reading, going to and from your appointments. There is a door-to-door -door opportunity as well. When you make your scheduled appointment, if you need the assistance for door-to-door, -to -door, just let them know when you call to schedule your appointment. To reserve the ride, you're going to be calling the Merrimack, Regional, Merrimack Valley Regional Transportation Authority's office. We'll make sure that the brochures that we're putting together will have all that information. We'll have something on our town website, and we'll make sure we have other areas. But the, there is going to be a brochure that looks very similar to this. It's going to be in green and gold. It's going to have all the details associated with the program in it. We'll make sure we get them out once we get the program finalized. As you can see here behind me, you can reserve Monday through Friday from 8.30 in the morning to 4 o'clock, 4.30 p.m. 
has to be 24 hours, minimum 24 hours in advance, up to two weeks in advance. And then when you, once you make the appointment, a day or so before, MVRTA will give you a call with a 30 minute window when they're gonna come pick you up. The ring and ride hours will run from six o'clock in the morning to 6 p.m. in the evening. The services will not be available on the holidays and we'll have those holidays posted so you know what they are. The way we've designed this program, we've built zones, transportation zones. So in, trans in zone A, which is in town, if you need a ride to an appointment, a medical appointment in town, there is no cost. Zone, a, zone B, it's a $2 charge to tra travel from town to anywhere in Andover, North Andover, Middleton, Linfield, Wilmington, and Reading. Zone C, it's a $3 charge to go to Woburn, Stoneham, Danvers, Peabody, and Wakefield. Zone D, which was Burlington, which is, I mean, Zone D is Burlington, Winchester, Melrose, which is $4. And Zone E, Boston, Bedford, Jamaica Plain, $5. That's one way cost, okay? There, we're gonna have ticket books available. Where we'll be selling those, we'll let you know as we start to have these workshops. We're going to have all that information nailed down for you. The tentative start date right now is 30 October. That's what we're hoping for. MVRTA has acquired new vans. They're trying to get the vans fully equipped, make sure the new staff that they're hiring to support the town of North Reading coming into their services are fully trained and familiar with the town before we get it started. Our hope was to start around the 16th, but they need a couple more weeks. So now the tentative date is the 30th, and I feel pretty confident we're going to be able to do that, which gives us an opportunity where Mary Perenni can host a couple workshops. We'll try to host some workshops at the town hall, and we'll get that information out. So thank you for the opportunity, and look forward to hearing more on this. It's a great opportunity for the town, and I look forward to seeing it get started. The Athletic Facility Subcommittee of the School Committee, Mr. Webster. Good evening. Just a quick update. Uh, number one, the two new playing fields, the softball field and the all-purpose field, which we put sod and an irrigation system in last year, are now getting full use. The, um, the all-purpose field is drawing rare reviews. It's, it's like a carpet. And it's, it's awesome that we have these two fields. And then second, the uh, rest, restroom uh, concession stand facility at Arthur Kenny Field, work has started. The electricity was disconnected today. The old sad concession stand is about to come down. It should be, come down, should be coming down tomorrow. Uh, the plan is to have all the infrastructure work, all of the uh, electrical, all of the plumbing work, and the foundation done by the end of November. And then the plan after that is to have the building brought in in two or three sections and put on the foundation in the February timeframe. March 15th is the deadline for the project. Everything should be completed at that time except for the final paving of the area because the paving plan still open until the April timeframe. But it will be available for use in, uh, for the April spring season for the high school and for youth sports. Thank you. Are there any other committee reports this evening? Seeing none, does the Board of Selectmen wish to make a recommendation? Mr. Moderator, the Board of Selectmen recommends. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the reports, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 2, Ms. Manupelli. Mr. Moderator, I move to authorize payment of the bills of the prior year in the amount of $9,973.06 by transferring from the fiscal year 2018 omnibus budget as voted under Article 15 of the June 5, 2017 annual town meeting as follows. Line 96, water enterprise expenses, $282.06. Line 47, DPW snow and ice expenses, 
Line 47, DPW Road and Street Expenses, $6,945. Line 30, Pensions and Benefits, $2,530, as specified in Article 2, as printed in the warrant. Does the Board of Selectmen wish to make a recommendation? Ms. Manupelli. The Board of Selectmen recommends. For the Finance Committee, Mrs. Hovitt. The Finance Committee recommends. Further discussion? This, these are prior year bills. They require a four-fifths vote. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 3, Ms. Manupelli. Mr. Moderator, I move to transfer from free cash the sum of $200,000 to be added to the Capital Improvement and Stabilization Fund established under Article 5 of the October 1, 2007 Annual Town Meeting as specified in Article 3 as printed in the warrant. The recommendation for the Board of Selectmen, Ms. Manupelli. The Board of Selectmen recommends. For the Finance Committee, Mr. Hovitt. The Finance Committee recommends. Discussion. You can either go to the center microphone or. Ms. Manupelli. Or, nope. May our finance director speak, Mr. Moderator? Yes. Free cash um, annually is certified by the Department of Revenue, um, and free cash comes from undesignated, unreserved fund balance, which arrives from turnbacks of departments' budgets, unexpended balances. Um, it also has to do with revenues that we've brought in. It's a formula that is calculated by the Department of Revenue, and it basically becomes our undesignated, unreserved fund balance. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 4, Mr. Masseri. Mr. Moderator, I move to pass over Article 4 as printed in the warrant. Recommendation for the Board of Selectmen, Mr. Masseri. The Board of Selectmen unanimously recommends. For the Finance Committee, Mrs. Hobbit. The Finance Committee recommends with the caveat that this is an important fund. It's our rainy day account, and we really need to think about how we fund it. It's currently underfunded. We need to certainly consider in the spring adding additional money to it. Further discussion? M Mr. Masseri. So this, this article is put in the warrant because we don't have notification at the time of signing the warrant about our free cash level. And we put it in on the basis that if in fact the free cash number exceeds our estimate and we have some additional free cash, in October we would put money into the stabilization fund. Actually, in July, in our June town meeting, we did put some money in. Further discussion? Mr. Messier. 
Um, I'm not sure exactly what your question was. Well, I thought you said this money came from free cash, and she just said that the money came from free cash, and we just voted on it. So now, and you said you wouldn't, you'd only put this number up if you didn't know how much money you were getting in your free cash, but now you can just turn to the article number three and see how much money you're getting. Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. To further explain, at the time that the warrant is signed by the Board of Selectmen in early September, we're not aware of what the confirmed number approved by the Department of Revenue is for free cash. We get notified of that number afterwards. In this case, we received notification about 10 days or so ago of the free cash number. We then, with the uh, Town's Finance Director, evaluate our long-term needs for uh, not just for this fiscal year but for future fiscal years including the upcoming June town meeting and make a recommendation in this case based on the transfer in made at the October 2016 town meeting we opted not to recommend a transfer in at this particular town meeting so as to fund items on the warrant later on as well as needs for the June town meeting uh, next year so the, the, let me see if I can help so the motion, the motion to pass over is we're just not going to put any of the free cash funds into this particular account. We this is different free cash funds? Yes. So together we're getting over $4 million? 2.3. Yes, Mr. That might help. Mr. O'Leary. It's approximately $2.3 million in certified free cash. How much? What's it say? $1,698,000 in free cash, which has been certified. That's what we have available funds right now from... Is that for fiscal year 2018? It's in the current fiscal year. It's available. Okay. All right? But it doesn't mean we're going to spend it all. And it doesn't mean we're always going to put it in, into the savings account or into the stabilization. There are certain uh, things that we need to fund throughout the course of this year, which with town meeting approval, we're going to take certain action and use a portion of this money. At the end of the year, come to our June town meeting, We'll then finalize what we're going to do with the rest of the cash. But you'll see throughout the evening there'll be several appropriations from the free cash amount, that million six. So it's going to be allocated into different areas, different accounts for different purposes. But we've got enough to cover it, and we're not overspending. I, I would ask that folks ask to be recognized before they speak. And if you're speaking, you need to be at a microphone. Thank you. Further discussion? Seeing none, and all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? Article 5. Mr. Masseri. Mr. Moderator, I move to pass over Article 5 as printed in the warrant. Recommendation from the Board of Selectmen, Mr. Masseri. Board of Selectmen unanimously recommends. For the Finance Committee, Mrs. Hovitt. Finance Committee recommends. Further discussion? I think my uh, comment would be best uh, reminding you what Mr. O'Leary just said. Uh, if we had an abundance of free cash, we might be transferring money into this article. We put the article in as a placeholder not knowing what the free cash number will be. Come June, we may be putting money into this. In fact, we probably will be, as we've done in the past. Mr. Webster. Oh, I was Just a quick question. The fund balance in the warrant says $1,142,547. That here says $892,546.83. So I'm just trying to understand the difference. Mr. Gilberto. Through you, Mr. Moderator, so the, the copy of the warrant that was mailed to residences uh, earlier in September contained uh, the incorrect fund balance. This is the correct fund balance. Uh, similarly, the warrant included the incorrect fund balance for the capital improvement, a uh, debt capital stabilization fund as well, which was noted uh, on the screen as you were walking in this evening. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Opposed? Unanimous? Article 6, Mr. Masseri. 
Mr. Moderator, I move to amend the FY 2018 operating budget voted under Article 15 of the June 5, 2007 annual town meeting as follows. DPW building assistant transfer of $4,700 from the line 13 salary pool supplement of FY 2018 omnibus budget to line 46 DPW salaries as specified in Article 6 is printed in the warrant. The recommendation for the Board of Selectmen, Mr. Masseri. The Board of Selectmen unanimously recommends. For the Finance Committee, Mrs. Hogan. The Finance Committee recommends. Discussion. This is just moving uh, money from our uh, salary uh, pool to an actual line item in the budget for the assistant uh, building uh, department. Yeah. It yeah. just seems like such a low amount of money. Like that's only the the, the, this, this, uh, this amount of money is in addition to what was budgeted for that position. The position cost a ton more than was originally estimated. Okay. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? Article 7, Mr. Prisco. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move to transfer from free cash the sum of five fifty thousand to construct, reconstruct, or make improvements to town hall and other municipal buildings, including all incidental and related costs, as specified in Article Seven, as printed in the warrant. The recommendation for the Board of Selectmen, Mr. Prisco. Board of Selectmen recommends. For the Finance Committee, Mrs. Hobart. The Finance Committee recommends. Discussion. Mr. Prisco. As you can see, the slide behind me sort of breaks down how the 50,000 be worked. We, we do this, we've been doing this now every year for the last several years trying to reinvest in some of our buildings, try to improve the quality, handle some things that actually need some TLC. So this is the breakdown, and we ask that you continue to support this article as we've done in past years. Mr. Yule. Can you hear me? Jeff Yule, 4.7 Mr. Prisco, or Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, yes, there have been multiple appropriations relative to improvements in the uh, fire station uh, itself. Uh, it's been a multiple phase project that's underway. Uh, if uh, I understand from my last update on the project, uh, that we are close to finishing the work in the so-called day room in the facility in the final phase. Uh, and we've also re completed replacement of the windows. The final phase in the bunk room is scheduled to take place over the course of this fiscal year. Thank you. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 8, Mr. Prisco. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move to transfer from free cash the sum of $200,000 to fund a master plan to address current and future town facilities needs, including any costs incidental or related thereto, as specified in Article 8, as printed in the warrant.
Recommendation for the Board of Selectmen, Mr. Prisco. Board of Selectmen recommends. For the Finance Committee, Mrs. Herbert. The Finance Committee had hoped there'd be a presentation about this article, and so we have not as yet voted. The Finance Committee has yet voted on this because we anticipate the presentation. Tell me if you'll give us a second to vote. I can say a few words if you like before. Would you? Sure. Mr. Prescott. Thank you, Mr. Monterey. Just give me a minute to reassemble the mic. Thank you. So the plan behind this Warren article is, if you know, we have a very tired town hall. We have a very tired fire station. We have a lot of buildings that are very tired. And we really haven't had a plan in a long time, a real solid plan to sort of outline, to line, lay out a future for how we're going to address these buildings because they're aging. So this is the opportunity we felt was perfect timing because we've already approved the North Reading Master Plan, which is underway, which should take us about 18 months to get that complete. And this would run in conjunction with that, where it looks at the facilities themselves. So as we have a master plan for the future of the town, we're also going to have a plan for the buildings associated with it. So as we start to collect some cash from any new potential acquisitions, like for example, the JT Berry, we may have some funds available that we may want to use for capital associated with these buildings. This will at least give us an idea of what needs to be addressed and what the need is for the future. And that's why we need this money to study all the buildings so we can make the right decisions on where do we start, what's the priority, and what is the actual need. So if we need a new fire station, working with the chief and have his future needs to address his apparatus, his future purchases, we can study that and make sure we have the right design in place and where we would actually put that in town. Those things need to happen so we make the right decisions. And that's why this is a very important feasibility study and we really hope that you would support us. For the Finance Committee, Ms. Silva. Um, the Finance Committee approves. Further discussion? Mr. Yule. Thank you, Mr. Monterey. Um, the question I have the last time that we had a study on the Pacific's master plan, I believe it was 12 years ago or around that time. Mr. Prisco? I believe you may be referring to the master plan, the North Reading Town master plan. I'm not sure we actually had a facilities master plan done that I can recall, um, unless Mr. O'Leary, the historian of the group. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> Mr. O'Leary, some of you may recall something that we referred to as FUMP, Facilities Use Master Plan Committee, and that was probably done 15 years ago or thereabouts, uh, where we studied some of the needs that we had, and um, some of it came to fruition, some of it didn't, because that also included some of the school uh, building facilities also. But that was a long time ago. Uh, we're at a junction now where, again, we have an aging town hall. We have a, a senior center that doesn't have enough space to uh, have enough programming. You know, we have a, a need potentially for a west side fire station. And we have a whole host of uh, issues that we're facing right now. And uh, it was the unanimous consent of the board that we should probably attack this thing in total in looking at our, uh, our needs, what's the best way to uh, deliver the services, and what types of facilities are we going to need uh, looking forward. Mr. Yo. Yes. Uh, excuse me. Can you uh, share with us what came to fruition from that study? Uh, I guess the reason why I ask you, if you don't mind, um, it's $200,000. I'm not saying this is a bad idea. Uh, my point is, is that if we've done it 15 years ago and done very little with it, my concern is. What are we going to do with it this time? It's going to be another thing that goes on the shelf and sits around for uh, another 10, 15 years. It's concerned that we have. Mr. Prescott. So I believe back in June we approved the master plan for the town. 
and the one missing piece to associate with tying into it was the facilities part of it, and that's what this is going to tie into. So when they're completed in conjunction, but now as the leaders, we can look at it as a whole and how we want to approach the future for the town. And if you look at our strategic plan, this has been one of the, the goals, which when you were part of the board, Mr. Yule, you know you voted in favor of updating some of these buildings as part of our strategic plan and have it in there for the next, within the next five years. So that's what will help us achieve some of those objectives that we have in that strategic plan. We just don't want to go off and make decisions uh, until we actually have this feasibility study to help us outline what we truly need. Thank you. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 9, Mr. Prisco. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move to pass over Article 9 as printed in the warrant. Recommendation for the Board of Selectmen. Mr. Prisco. Board of Selectmen recommends passing over. For the Finance Committee. Mrs. Hobart. The Finance Committee recommends passing over. Mr. Prisco. Just a quick update on the JT Berry acquisition. So we've been, since June Town meeting, we've worked every business day that I can recall since then on this, getting this uh, to the point where we can close. We have a uh, tentative closing date of November 29th, so we're coming to the end. A lot of work's been done. I want to thank the town administrator, his staff. I want to thank Finicom for assisting us to get through the process to get to here. We had a couple things that we had to uh, finance uh, that they assisted us to get things closed. So we're very close to closing. And uh, on June 29th, if everything goes well, we will uh, close a $30 million acquisition, which we'll have under the sale partnership model with the state. And right now, we're still on track for a 70-30 split on the proceeds. So we, um, as we stand today, we didn't need any additional money to get to closing. So that's why we're requesting passing over this article. But that, I wanted to give you a little update as well. Sorry, I'm sorry, November 29th. I apologize. Thank you for catching that. November 29th. Further discussion? What's your birthday, Steve? That's what I have in my mind. On the motion to pass over, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? Article 10. I know Article 10 through 14 are all related to water. As I understand, Mr. O'Leary, you would like a 20-minute leave of the meeting for the purposes of presenting all a presentation related to all 10, 11, 12, 13, and, and 13. That's correct, Mr. Moderator. If you would like, I would uh, make the motion for Article 10 and then ask the leave of the meeting to discuss all. Okay. All right. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town appropriate $325,000 for water and or wastewater study and or design including all costs related thereto, and as funding, therefore, to authorize the treasurer, with the, with the approval of the Board of Selectmen, to borrow said sum under and pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 7 or 8, or any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds and notes of the town, therefore, while the bonds issued here under shall be general obligation bonds of the town, it's anticipated that $175,500 of this uh, shall be paid from the Water Enterprise Fund retained earnings, $149,500 of this borrowing shall be repaid from the general fund. Further, that the Board of Selectmen is authorized to pursue federal, state, or other grant funding, the proceeds of which may be allocated towards said projects. Further, that any premium received by the town upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium applied to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bonds or notes, may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 20, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed uh, to pay such costs by a like amount and further to authorize the Board of Selectmen to take any other action necessary to carry out this project. Don't ask me to repeat that. Mr. O'Leary. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I move for leave the meeting for uh, 20 minutes. Uh, to discuss uh, articles 10 through 14 because they're all related to 
uh, water and wastewater projects. Mr. O'Leary has asked for a 20-minute leave of the meeting. This requires a vote of the meeting. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Mr. O'Leary, you have 20 minutes. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, just as a little bit of history, uh, most of you have been involved for the last uh, three or four years in uh, relation to uh, advances that we've made in order to get us uh, enough potable water to serve the needs of the community for the foreseeable future and hopefully for the 100 years and beyond. Uh, approximately three, three and a half years ago, um, we, again, based upon the, the needs of our wells, our wells, we only produce about 35% of our own water here. We purchased the balance uh, from the town of Andover and have been doing so since uh, 1991. We've had a good relationship with the town of Andover. Uh, they've been uh, good partners with us and we appreciate uh, their partnering with us uh, for this uh, long period of time. Approximately three years ago, uh, we were looking at the needs, again, of our uh, long-term needs and the condition of our wells. We have found it necessary to seek opportunities to uh, produce 100% of the water somewhere else. Our uh, wells are uh, aging. Uh, we don't have uh, sufficient capacity to service our needs, so we have to look uh, to other sources. Uh, we approached Andover at that particular time. Uh, they informed us that they did not believe that they had the, uh, the capacity, uh, the permitting and capacity to do so. So as a result, we came to town meeting over the last three years and sought uh, and received from you uh, the approval to uh, go towards the MWRA. Uh, we have been working very diligently. Uh, and again, three years ago, we extended our intermunicipal agreement with Andover to take us through June 30th, 2019. So our agreement with Andover was to expire June 30th, 2019. Our goal was to have uh, MWRA water pumped into the town effective July 1st, 2019, one day later. Uh, again, the uh, relationship has been very good. That intermunicipal agreement uh, sort of took care of our needs, and we appreciate the uh, opportunity to get to where we needed to be. Uh, as recently as this past June town meeting, uh, we came uh, to this body and asked for approval and uh, funding for construction of uh, tying into the MWRA through the town of Reading. You gave us that authorization. We, you have given us all the authorization we have needed to go and join the MWRA. Uh, since June, uh, a little bit prior to June, there was some uh, communication and some outreach from the town of Andover through their response to our DEIR process, the environmental impact uh, reporting processes. They indicated that they now had the uh, capacity and ability and willingness to supply the water to us. Uh, we didn't have sufficient information in June to present to you as to what that meant, what the cost uh, forecasts were going to be, what the cost of tying in, what our infrastructure looked like. Uh, so we, again, uh, we're just proceeding uh, with uh, tying in with the MWRA. As of June, uh, again, we appreciate uh, Mr. Salafia and, and his crew and, and Mr. Flanagan, the town manager. Uh, as I stated, our selectmen's meeting a few weeks ago, I think Mr. Masseri and the town administrator and our DPW head and uh, Mark Clark, I think we spent most of our summers with these people than we more than did with our families, uh, talking about uh, this particular opportunity. So what has happened is uh, we have been presented with an opportunity uh, to tie in with Andover. Andover, uh, through the course of some negotiations here, uh, as recently as this evening, the Board of Selectmen has signed an extension to the intermunicipal agreement with the town of Andover, which has already previously approved it, for an additional two years. They offered us this additional time to uh, properly evaluate their proposal to supply us with water. Uh, there's a whole set of terms and conditions in, uh, uh, that they've offered to us. Uh, it appears as though it is uh, substantially uh, an economic benefit for us to consider it. However, we have not, the Board of Selectmen has not had ample time or opportunity to uh, properly evaluate their system and the capacity to deliver to us and what type of infrastructure we would be needing to, uh, to build out here in town. So we wanted to make sure that you know, we, we took the time to do it. But the offer was significant enough for us to put a push the pause button on the MWRA. So a few weeks ago, the Board of Selectmen voted to uh, postpone uh, 
the letting of contracts for construction in the town of Reading. We were going to do that uh, later this fall and construction on the infrastructure improvements which we are paying for or would be paying for uh, in the town of Reading was to take place start, starting next year. As you're aware, uh, last year we, we also appropriated money where we purchased a uh, parcel of land over on Mill Street for the siting of a pump station to tie into the MWRA. We have uh, consummated that deal and we are the proud owners of that particular parcel at this particular point in time. But as I said, the Board of Selectmen just a couple weeks ago voted to push the pause button on the MWRA in light of the fact that the uh, town of Andover has offered an extension of two years, up to two years, to evaluate their processes and what they can provide for us. Uh, additionally, uh, in the agreement uh, for the extension, uh, Andover will be reimbursing us for some of the costs associated uh, with what we've already expended for the MWRA in return for our consideration of their proposal. So it makes, uh, the Board of Selectmen believes that it makes a substantial economic sense to uh, take the time, spend some additional funds to properly evaluate it because in the long run, again, this is a decision that not only the board is making, but town meeting, you people will be making, which is going to impact our community uh, for over 100 years. So the next few articles that we have, uh, what we have, the first one here, article, I should probably go by what we have here. So the agenda, so article 10, the one that motion I just made, is to study and design the wastewater connection with the town of Andover. We're looking for $325,000 uh, to expend in order to properly evaluate can they deliver the water, what type of infrastructure needs will we have on our side of the line. Again, Andover is going to take care of anything they need to do on their side of the line at their cost. Uh, but in order for us to effectuate that, bring it to fruition, and make an informed decision, we have to spend the money and have our experts take a look at and evaluate their systems as well as our own. So that's what Article 10 is. Article 11 would authorize uh, an intermunicipal agreement with the town of Andover, Andover and a home rule petition. It's a filing special legislation basically for uh, a 99 year agreement uh, with the town of Andover. Now we want to make this decision which is going to take us uh, for several generations forward so that uh, future boards don't have to deal with this issue and the community won't have to deal with it uh, hopefully ever again. Uh, so that's gonna require special legislation so we'll be looking for authorization from you to uh, allow us to do that. In conjunction with that, we also have three articles which, uh, which are related to the MWRA. Right, so Article 12, uh, you had already approved previously uh, all of the funding necessary for uh, the construction to be had and made in, in the town of Reading, the purchase of uh, uh, the pump station, the construction of the pump station, and also the uh, $7.68 million dollar uh, to join the MWRA. Article 12 is more of a, uh, a clarifying motion on our part. You've already given us the authorization to do it, but we are specifically asking for authority to spend the $7.68 million to join the MWRA. Article 13, again, another intermunicipal agreement with the town of Reading is going to have to be entered into. Uh, that is again going to require home rule petition through the legislature. We're looking for 99 years on that. Uh, and we're going to be looking for authorization for you to allow us the opportunity, if we deem it most appropriate for the town, to do this. And then Article 14 uh, would requires legislation for some of the land by Mill Street is a crossing of the Ipswich River. And associated with that is a crossing of uh, wetlands, conservation lands. So in order to change the use and cross wetlands, that requires special legislation. So we'll be looking for authorization uh, to do that. What's important to note is, and I'm sure the question is going to be raising, why are you asking for Andover and MWRA at the same time? The Board of Selectmen has determined that we're going to run on a parallel path, and we have been since uh, last May and June, even when we were talking with Andover and up to this date, are still running on a parallel path uh, for MWRA and potentially Andover. Reason being is, again, our wells are getting tired. We're looking at uh, facing millions of dollars in upgrades to these wells if we don't get this done on a timely basis. We are still looking for and uh, targeting July 1st, 2019. In order to do that, we're seeking your authorization and uh, your blessing here to run in tandem so that uh, when we finally make a determination, again, we've imposed a deadline on ourselves of April 
this coming spring. We're going to be evaluating Andover's proposal. We already have uh, MWRAs. Those costs are known. Uh, but there are certain hurdles that are associated with both of them. Um, and what we want to do is we don't want to have to wait till next June town meeting to come back here because that would delay filing of legislation, that would delay uh, further funding, it would probably uh, uh, increase costs associated with any projects uh, that are going to have to be undertaken on either one of these projects, whichever we determine. So we're looking for you to give us the authorization, put the tools in our toolbox so that we can negotiate, uh, evaluate, and uh, make a determination on a timely basis. Uh, so once again, I think it's important that you understand this is an opportunity we didn't have three or four months ago, but it's an opportunity that we should take advantage of, and the board has determined that we want to take advantage of in evaluating the Andover proposal. So. Let's see. Uh, so again, Andover, the town of Andover has indicated a willingness and ability to provide 100% of our water. There's a capital cost a saving of approximately $6.8 million. Uh, compared to the infrastructure we're going to be investing in down in Reading and what we would have to invest here. The initial uh, indications are that there were uh, cost savings, construction cost savings of $6.8 million looking at Ando. This is, these are some of the reasons why we're considering Ando. Uh, there's an avoidance of the $7.68 million MWRA buy-in. We don't have to pay for buy-in, we're already buying from them. And then we took a, uh, a look at 20, last 20 years, uh, average increase in uh, rates, water rates, again, this is just water, not sewerage, increased water rates, uh, MWRA, we certainly know what Andover has been, we've been there since 1991, so on average it's been 1.2% annually, the MWRA is approximately 4%. So if you look at that over a period of time, you go 30, 40 years out, you're going to see a substantial difference in what we'll be paying as far as water rates going forward, so this certainly, uh, piqued our interest to the point where we would probably want to uh, do our due diligence and uh, take on our fiduciary responsibility and evaluate Andover at this time. Now as far as the, the remaining challenges uh, associated with the two projects, uh, both of them require permitting, both of them require special legislation, both of them require intermunicipal agreements, both of them, both of them uh, will involve uh, Water Management Act permitting, uh, but some of them have a little bit more than others. The MWRA, you know, the approval of getting the pipe across Mill Street Bridge from Reading, there's a historic uh, aspect to the bridge, there's a historic uh, aspect and conservation uh, issues. So at the local level down there, we would have to deal with the Historic uh, Committee and the Conservation Commission. We're going to need legislative approval for the same. Uh, approval of uh, a new 2.6 million gallon a day interbasin transfer agreement is going to be required for uh, the MWRA, again, what that means is we're in the Ipswich River Basin. Um, Mass Water Resources Authority draws from two or three basins right up Mass Western Massachusetts, and then they dump out in towards, uh, into Boston Harbor through Deer Island. So interbasin transfers are going to be required, and uh, specific uh, gallonage amounts are going to be needed. Uh, the town of Reading, we will be looking for a, 99-year agreement with them for wheeling. Again, the MWRA does not uh, deliver directly to us. It will be coming through the town of Reading. So Reading would be uh, entitled to some sort of a wheeling charge. We're going to charge us per gallon to wheel it through. And we would be, that wheeling charge would be then uh, allocated to the town of Reading to maintain the infrastructure to move the water back and forth for us for, for years to come. With Andover, again, we're looking to get into more detailed, how to believe it be more detailed, but more detailed negotiations uh, leading to a 99-year legal agreement uh, with the town of Andover, as I stated earlier. It is our intention to uh, take this off the table for a long period of time <coughs> and have other uh, future boards or town meetings have to deal with it. Andover Town Meeting would have to approve uh, the 99-year agreement. Uh, they have scheduled a town meeting, special town meeting, uh, I'm told for January. In order to effectuate that, we're asking you to do it this evening. Uh, it's also required legislative approval. Uh, the legislature, again, will be petitioned uh, jointly by the town of Andover and the town of North Reading, seeking this uh, 99 approval for the 99 year agreement. Uh, an approval of an additional 1.1 million gallons per day interbasin transfer. We already have an interbasin transfer agreement with the town of uh, Andover and 
the current levels are already been approved. This would be an additional 1.1 million gallons in order to uh, give us all of 100% of our water instead of approximately two thirds. And then Andover uh, obtaining approval of withdrawing additional water from the Merrimack River for long term needs. So again, Andover will be petitioning uh, uh, through Water Management Act uh, for additional gallonage to take out of the Merrimack River uh, watershed in order to provide us the future growth that we're looking for, as well as future growth that they be, they be needed. They currently have the capacity and ability to give us the, the 2.6 uh, million that we're looking for, which would include that 1.1. But for future growth, future economic de development, we'll be looking for more. They've signed onto uh, pre-terms here to give us uh, all that we anticipate our needs to be for the next 30, 40 years. So let's look, take a look at just the pros and cons to give you a little more information. Um, the MWRA is, is certainly a permanent solution. It's a uh, quasi-governmental agency. It's not going to be going anywhere. Um, once you join, for the mere price of $7.68 million, they give you a seat at the table. We have representation. So uh, the community here, North Reading, is on board with going with the MWRA. Again, you have already, over the last three years, through three or four different town meetings, appropriated uh, all the necessary funds uh, necessary to effectuate the construction and uh, reading for the tie-in, the purchase of the property and the building of the pump station uh, on Mill Street, and any uh, requisite uh, legislation has already been approved uh, to allow us to join the MWRA. So we've done everything we've needed to do to bring us potable water for the foreseeable future through the MWRA. Uh, the capital funding in has already been approved by town meeting. For Andover, again, there are already two existing uh, connections, you know, one at uh, Jenkins Road and Haverhill Street, one on Route 28 between Andover and North Reading. Uh, no pumping is required, so we don't need a pump station. It just so happens that topographically, Reading, well, they're south of the border um, on the map. They're also lower lying, so any water we get from them has to be pumped up. Andover, being north of the border, just happens to be geographically higher, so it's gravity fed. So we really don't need a pumping station, so it's not required. Uh, any infrastructure costs in Andover will be funded by Andover. There's no buy-in costs, there's no wheeling charges. Historically, the water rates they mentioned before uh, were 1.2% as opposed to 4% uh, for the MWRA. And then another big issue which has been on our long-term strategic plan and as far as our future needs and growth in order to uh, effectuate some property tax relief for residential uh, properties here. We're obviously looking to increase our economic development. The biggest uh, stumbling block that we've had is that we don't have sewerage in our threat. The studies that we have done and all the analysis we have done has shown us that the uh, best route for us to go is through the Greater Lawrence Sewer District, not the MWRA. And um, Andover has offered to support our efforts in effectuating our tying in to the Greater Lawrence Sewer District uh, through them, through Andover, which is how we would have to go. So that is a uh, big consideration for us in relation to our future economic growth and development and getting a sewerage on uh, Main Street, Martin's Pond area, Concord Street in particular. So as far as uh, the, any negative aspects in relation to the two projects, uh, the MWRA, as I alluded to earlier, requires a high level of permitting because of the interbasin transfers, where you're getting the water from and then where is it gonna end up. Uh, getting approval to cross the Ipswich River at Mill Street, again, it's gonna require some uh, approvals down in the Reading area, and as well as uh, legislation uh, for the wetlands crossings and conservation. Uh, requirements to make improvements in Reading water infrastructure, you know, several million dollars, a difference of $6.8 million uh, more to tie in down in Reading and do that infrastructure than what we anticipate having to do here. Again, the MWRA will not be bringing uh, the water supply directly to North, North Reading, thus requiring a wheeling charge through Reading. We talked about that earlier. Uh, all the costs associated with the construction and infrastructure costs in Reading will be borne by North Reading. There's a single connection. There would be a single connection with the town of uh, Reading, which is just at Mill Street, whereas in Andover, we already have two connections. So as far as redundancy or in a case of an emergency, at least you have two sources. 
Um, and again, the water needs to be pumped up to North Reading, which requires the construction of a pumping station. Uh, we have to add chloramines at the pumping station. Uh, we have to buy into the MWRA, $7.68 million. Uh, if we do not go, if we go the MWRA route, obviously uh, Andover's enthusiasm to work with us on a uh, shortened timeline to tie into the Greater Lawrence Sewer District probably goes away. Whereas if they're partner partnering with us, um, they will be selling us more water means additional revenue for them. We would have more economic growth. It certainly would be prove them to assist us in uh, getting tied into the Greater Lawrence Sewer District. So that may be delayed if we go with the MWRA. And again, special legislation to allow the water line through the conservation land is just another hurdle. And with Andover, we will not be a member of the uh, Andover's Water Commission as with the MWRA. We'd have a seat at the, the board. Uh, the Water Commission in Andover is the board of select. They have committed verbally, though, to uh, setting up an advisory committee, which would give North Reading a seat uh, at the table on a more regular basis to ensure that there's a, uh, a good line of communication in relation to what is happening with their infrastructure and their water system so that we wouldn't be surprised. Um, the agreement lacks permanence. Again, it's only 99 years, whereas the MWRA and quasi-governmental agency, we wouldn't necessarily, I understand there's like a 10-year renewal with the MWRA, but nobody ever gets denied. Uh, chlorine chlorine uh, will have to be added at the two entry points, so we're going to have to be putting in uh, a couple of uh, pumping uh, stations for uh, chlorine. Small, I'm not talking pumping station like the one in Mill Street, but to treat the water as it comes in from, from Andover. Uh, the impact of the MWRA sewer opportunity on Concord Street is unclear. Uh, right now, I wouldn't say it's a direct result, but it certainly was enhanced. As we were talking with the MWRA about buying water from them, we were also talking about potential sewerage, knowing full well that we would never be able to tie in the entire, entire community all of Route 28. Uh, but as some of you may be aware, we do have a, there is a connection at Concord Street where Teradyne uh, currently is right at 93. That one particular parcel is tied into the MWRA sewer district. That, was, that happened in 1991 through special legislation. Uh, they're not using all the capacity that they've been permitted for. Uh, we've had been in discussions with the MWRA about picking up the residual amount of that capacity in order to sewer the mile, mile and a quarter of Concord Street. That again would present a marvelous opportunity for economic development in that particular area, which is right off 93, where all we have is trucking terminals primarily, and uh, would add uh, substantial opportunity for economic growth. Uh, how this, uh, if we go with Andover, impacts our dialogue with the MWRA is unclear. I uh, would hope that they wouldn't hold it against us, but you never know. Uh, and then the special legislation for the 99-year agreement is the, uh, again, just another uh, hurdle that has to be overcome in order to effectuate the changes. So again, as we look at the cost of operating our water system, and we took a look at and just uh, forecasted based upon our best uh, knowledge as far as the rate increases, the 1.2%, uh, and again, uh, Andover has forecasted a 2.5% increase per year versus the 4% uh, that the MWRA has pretty much guaranteed. Uh, the 2.5, again, has not ever really come to fruition, but they've been forecasting 2.5%, and those were kind of the numbers that we looked at. And as you can see, if you look at the delta between those two lines, the red and the blue lines, um, looking out over potentially, like, I think it's about 40 years, you see how it starts to grow substantially. We're talking millions of dollars here. Um, just with the forecasting of a 2.5% increase versus a 4% increase. So as I stated earlier, the Board of Selectmen, uh, think thought it was uh, extremely necessary that we uh, push the pause button on the MWRA infrastructure improvements in, uh, in Reading to properly evaluate the Andover proposal. One thing that I need to emphasize, the only additional money that we're looking for tonight is the $325,000. Again, one of those articles, we're gonna be asking for the 7.68 authorization. You've already voted that, but this is a clarifying uh, action to ensure that they couldn't be questioned on down the road. You basically already approved it.
So the only new money we're looking for is the $325,000. It's important to note that we have already spent approximately $953,000 to join the MWRA. The town of Andover, starting next year, has agreed to pay us back $93,500 a year in the form of credits on our water bills for 10 years if we enter into a long-term agreement with them so that we will be fully reimbursed for what we have expended, the MWRA. Uh, if we do not go with Andover, we would get a portion of that through the timeline. Until we sign an agreement with the MWRA, we would start getting credits. So there's a potential to get, uh, even if we don't go, you know, maybe a quarter of a million bucks, you know, a quarter of a million dollars back from the town of Andover uh, just for us providing them, or providing ourselves an opportunity to evaluate their proposal. So it's important for you to understand that we've had I don't know, a dozen or 15 meetings with the town of Andover, Ms. Caceri, the town administrator, Mark Clark, uh, Andrew uh, Lafferty, our DPW director, to make sure that before we came to you, that this makes good fiscal sense to invest the money wisely in order to evaluate this proposal. And we come to you uh, unanimously uh, seeking approval for all Articles 10 through 14, again, to allow us to move forward on a timely basis, not delay uh, a decision unnecessarily, and not incur any additional construction costs, regardless of which way we go. So we would appreciate your support. Uh, hope you understand uh, why we're running in tandem here, because we don't want to lose any time, and uh, we want to make a good fiscal decision uh, for an issue that is going to uh, meet our needs for as far into the future as we can see. Right. That's right. Yeah, and we are not going, again, we are not incurring any additional capital costs for, for either project, MWRA or the town of Andrew. Well, we're doing it. So, Mr. Moderator, I appreciate that. I think my time has probably expired. And uh, I'm available. Maybe. Maybe a little. Maybe a little. Thank you for your tolerance. So we have a motion on the floor. Yep. Recommendation for the Board of Selectmen. Mr. O'Leary. Board of Selectmen unanimously recommends. For the Finance Committee. Mrs. Herbert. The Finance Committee recommends. Discussion. Mr. Yule. Thank you, Mr. Martin. The uh, study uh, that's going to cost $325,000, uh, that's going to be the direction uh, when it comes time to make the decision on whether to go with the or whether to go with um, That study does not reap what we hope it will. Right. The, the $325,000 under this article is specific to the town of Andover's proposal and their ability to deliver water, as well as evaluating the infrastructure for wastewater combined, both. Because during the permitting process, it's required of us to address not only the water you're going to be taking, but the state uh, and environmental groups and environmental authorities at the state level also want to know what are you going to do for wastewater. Where's it going to go? How are you going to treat it? How, what are you going to do with it? Uh, what's your long-range plan? We don't have sewerage now. You're looking to have sewerage. What's your timeline associated with that? Where are you putting it? Where's it going and what's the capacity? So again, we will also be evaluating Andover's wastewater system capacity to handle wastewater from North Reading. So it's simultaneously the two answers, two, two issues, water and wastewater. Mr. Yule. Yes, thank you. So, so this study cannot answer those questions adequately. This study will answer those questions adequately. We have uh, talked with our consultants, that we're, which are currently dealing with with the MWRA. Uh, we have asked them to come up with a proposal to do a, an evaluation, appropriate evaluation, level of evaluation, so we can make an informed decision. This will be sufficient funds to evaluate Andover's system and their ability to provide water our ability to take it, what type of infrastructure we may need on our side of the table, and additionally, wastewater, how we're going to handle it going forward. So this is going to be sufficient, we're confident, and again, we anticipate having all this information by early spring, late winter, early spring, and the board will be making a decision by the end of April. 
Mr. Yaw. Thank you. Um, I just want to take this opportunity to, to thank Selectman Levy and thank uh, Selectman Mosiri for, from the very beginning, uh, making the effort, uh, looking for the opportunity, and creating the opportunity for the town of to have two choices, either handover or NWRA. It's very rare. Mr. O'Leary. We need the 2.6. Uh, IBT is inter-basin transfer. So in other words, we're taking water, currently we're taking water from our own wells, which is the Ipswich River watershed, but we're buying 60, 65% of our water from Andover, which comes from the Merrimack River watershed, which required an inter-basin transfer and legislative approval and state approval to get that. So what we, we need 2.6 million. And, and right now we're getting, right, right now we get 1.5 from Andover. We're looking for an additional 1.1 1. 1 oh, to provide 100% of our water. So MWRA, we're looking for the full 2.6. Sir. Mr. O'Leary. The, um, the, not only engineers, but also the state are also concerned with redundancy and, and backup supplies. Uh, we obviously would have uh, some sort of an issue in relation to Andover and having a backup. Uh, whether or not we could tie in with Reading, they certainly are more than willing and have been extremely uh, uh, helpful and understanding and uh, willing to work with us uh, if need be. But again, there's, there's some issues with the chloramines and chlorination issues, but those would have to be worked out. Uh, so we're aware of that. Uh, the uh, regulatory agencies are going to be addressing that in our permitting process. Uh, we will be addressing it. Uh, there are a lot of communities uh, throughout the Commonwealth that do not have uh, backup or redundancy. Uh, whether or not they allow us to decommission our wells or require us to keep our wells oper operating will be uh, part of the discussion. Uh, and again, we don't get 100% of our water now from ourselves. We only get 35%. Uh, as far as, um, you know, Reading uh, needing infrastructure, they're going forward with their infrastructure anyway. What we would be paying for uh, under the proposals are additional uh, 
sizing of pipes and things of that nature. Uh, but some of it won't be required if we don't if we don't tie in with them. again crossing the river and those sorts of things. Uh, what was the other question here, uh, uh, Mr. Atkinson? Yes. Uh, I, I, the other question is in regards to how some of these uh, impacts are going to play out in terms of wastewater treatment. Is that right. You asked if there was another one other than MWRA and, and uh, Greater Lawrence Sewers. Just the uh, South Essex Sewerage District, which is out in Salem. Uh, we had an opportunity back in the mid-70s to tie in with them and didn't, which was down by with the old Thompson Club uh, at the Middleton Line. Uh, they no longer have the capacity or infrastructure to support us tying in, so that's not an option for us. So it's either Greater Lawrence Sewer, MWRA, MWRA, much uh, larger issues associated with uh, us tying in, even for uh, other than Concord Street. So it, Greater Lawrence Sewer District is our almost sole and best option other than for Concord Street. All right, thank you very much. Mr. McGrath. Mr. McGrath, the Eagle Hall Road. Um, I'm supporting these, this, this motion. I also want to commend everyone down below who's been working on this. I, I know there's a lot of time there to come into it. But I do want to request, we're going to be asked Sir. Bill Burns, 105 Park. Curious, what would the water restrictions be like versus Reading, and the URA, and, and the uh, end owners? Right now we have the standard every other day or twice a week, whatever it is. Um, my understanding is that Reading or the NWRA districts didn't have water restrictions even last year during the drought. That's Mr. Correct. O'Leary. They, that's correct, they did not, and Andover just had a voluntary. Uh, water restriction. There was nothing imposed other than voluntary. And again, the capacity of the uh, Merrimack River watershed is actually greater than the MWRAs. Uh, so they have plenty of capacity, not a lot of communities drawing from it yet. Uh, we do not anticipate uh, any restrictions. And if there are any restrictions that are going to be put on the town of North Reading, would not be any different than any restrictions put on anybody in Andover. We would be treated the same. Are the restrictions North Reading because of it's because it's because of our ability to our well capacity in addition to our purchase from water and keeping the water towers at a safe level for fire prevention. And, and bringing, in, bringing water from either of these resources would solve that problem. Correct. Again, we would be making some infrastructure improvements here in North Reading, but they don't appear to be extremely substantial. Man. Can I, do it well? Can I do it well professionally? No. But for, for what I've been told, uh, you don't want to mix the two uh, because that could, could, uh, causes health problems. Uh, so it's going to be one or the other. Uh, so I, I can't give you a, a good scientific answer as to the difference between them other than the water uh, needs to be treated for bacteria. And again, maybe Mark Clark, our water superintendent, would be more than happy to explain it to you. Mr. Clark. I'm uh, Mark Clark, the water superintendent. Um, so currently we add chlorine to the water. Chlorine has been added as a disinfectant going back for probably uh, at least since the 1970s. Um, both chlorine and chloramines are used as a disinfectant in the water. It's in, the concern is having 
microbial growth out in your water distribution system that can lead to health concerns out in the system. Currently, both North Reading and the town of Andover use uh, chlorine as our primary disinfectant. The MWRA uses what's known as chloramines as their disinfectant. Chloramines are a combination of chlorine and ammonia, and the two of them together are used as for the same purpose, to, uh, to prevent microbial growth in the water distribution system. Chloramines tend to be, I believe, a little longer lasting. The MWRA system coming all the way from Western Mass, having to supply Boston and then communities as far as close to us as Reading, has to be able to maintain a level of disinfectant in their system. So they use chloramines. The combination, uh, the, the possibility of adding or mixing chlorine and chlor chloraminated water, um, it, it presents some problems. So we've, there's been some talk about North Reading being a backup supply to Reading or, or Andover, if we were to go to MWRA, Andover being a backup supply to North Reading and Reading, there's, that is a little problematic in the, uh, the addition of chlorines and chloramines or the mixing of the two in the distribution system. But it's primarily to prevent uh, any type of bacterial growth out in the distribution system. Ma'am. Yeah, play, play, I, excuse me. Could you please all wait to be recognized so that it's not a dialogue? Thank you. Ma'am. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I understand that we use chlorine and melon in our water, and I understand why we use it. And I understand that now, after your, your explanation, that we shouldn't be mixing them. But is there, are there health risks, higher health risks associated with one versus the other, that that should be part of our, um, our comparison when we're looking at, at these two different possibilities? Mr. Clark. So there are definitely health effects associated with either one at high levels. If you're operating your distribution system properly and maintaining low enough levels of chlorine or chloramines in the system, neither of them should present significant health effects. Obviously, if, uh, if, if, if you're over chlorinating, that can create problems in your system. So it is a, man, it is a, a matter of uh, managing the system properly. Uh, Mr. O'Leary referred to if we are to take water from Andover, there will be a need for us to add chlorine as the water comes into the system. The problem for us, why, we would, why would we want to add additional chlorine to the system is Andover's water treatment plant is, it's up off near where Raytheon is, it's off of Route 133. By the time the water gets to North Reading from Andover, the chlorine residual coming into North Reading is very low at that point because they're not overdosing what's leaving their water treatment plant. We would then need, just because we have to carry it all the way to the ends of our system too, so we would need to add some small amount of chlorine just so that we don't have a problem. So it's, it, it is a balancing act between not putting too much chlorine in but making sure you're not having bacterial problems in your distribution system. It is definitely a health balancing act, and all water systems kind of struggle with, with specifically with uh, that, that health effect, is don't add too much disinfectant, but add sufficient to not have other health effects uh, take place out in your distribution system. Mr. Yule. Thank you, I just want to get a clarification. Uh, hopefully, I didn't misunderstand Mr. McGrath's uh, question. Because tonight, we're giving the board of selectmen an additional option to decide on whether to go the end of the roof or the end of the order when the time comes. That we don't have to come back to town meeting to get any additional approvals. Decision is only now in the hands of the board. Is that correct? Mr. O'Leary. The decision to go with the town of Andover or the MWRA would then be in the hands of the board of selectmen. Should we decide to go with the town of Andover, there would probably, there would be some, in, at a future date, um, capital improvement needs to our water system that we would come back to town meeting and approval for. One thing that's important to understand, all of the approvals that you have given to date and the bonding authorizations and all the rest won't 
if we go Andover, won't be spent. The MWRA money will not be spent. And we would have a vote at future town meetings to rescind those actions. So we wouldn't have all those borrowings that we had already approved of over the last two or three years if we decided to go with Andover. But there would be capital improvement infrastructure improvements needed, which this study will identify uh, what those needs are going to be and the timelines associated with those. And again, we don't deem most of these to be immediate needs. These are going to be future anticipated needs based upon our current infrastructure and improvements we're going to have to be making down the line. So there will be future action at town meeting if we decide to go with Andover for appropriations for infrastructure. Thank you. Mr. Waller. Thank you, Mr. Waller. I just want to question. Again, their forecast rates for the next five to ten, ten years, five years anyway, is 2.5%. Um, not necessarily going to be fully expended, but that's what their anticipated levels are, and that's what our uh, formulas that were put in here to show the delta between the, the two MWRA. Uh, as far as the rate structure that we're going to be uh, charged, the proposal from Andover is to charge us 95% of their lowest tiered residential rate. So we will become their primary uh, premier customer at a lower rate than all of the Andover rate payers. So uh, we would have the same effect if they go up to 2%. We would go up 2% based upon 95% of their lowest tier, tiered rate, residential rate in Andover. So they have offered us a favorable rate in relation to any other rate payer in the town of Andover. And uh, again, we would be treated just as any, over, any other Andover customer uh, is going to be treated as far as any restrictions, any increases, or anything like that. Other than the rate structure, we have a more favorable rate. Thank you. That's a very good answer. Well, it's a very good offer, too. Ma'am, are you standing to speak? Could you come down to the microphone? or? Hold on, they'll bring one to you. Sorry. Yeah, that's, that's the money we're looking for to do the appropriate study of the Andover system, our own water system, and the ability to tie in to wastewater in Andover. That's set. We don't need that's any more money other than that. Eleven, that's cost of zero, right? Eleven is just to authorize us to enter into an intermunicipal agreement agreement with Andover to supply us water and file special legislation because it's going to re require legislative approval for them to provide us all the water, 100% of our water. So and for a 99 year, for a 99 year period. That's so going that gives you authorization to go ahead, but it's not financial, there's no money there. No money. Not another penny, not asking for another dime. We're just asking you to reauthorize um, the buy-in. Again, much like the previous one, which is just an intermunicipal agreement, authorizing us uh, to enter into this agreement with Reading for a 99-year period and have special legislation 
uh, approved, no dollar amount. Uh, 14, again, is just special legislation uh, to allow us to do the river crossing associated with the MWRA tie-in at Mill Street. Because pipe has to be laid through conservation land, it's going to require an act of the legislature to do so. But we don't anticipate any, there's no cost associated with it other than potentially uh, if we have to reclamate or reclaim some other area, recreate some wetlands somewhere else, but we don't know until uh, we go through their conservation commission, our conservation commission, their conservation commission, and the legislature. So, but this just authorizes us to go for the special legislation. As far as any additional costs associated with that, I don't anticipate it to be substantial at all, but uh, no money here. Thank you, Jan. Further discussion. Mr. Delaney. Thank you, Mr. Honor. Sean Delaney, Sean Delaney. First, I want to thank the board for the collaborative effort and how they came together and how they strategized and used what they've ever already came up to the advantage of the town of Mount I don't think I've seen that in all the years I've been in town. That was impressive to me. Uh, Mr. Honor, I appreciate the presentation. Uh, but I think there's one thing that was maybe not emphasize not we had a willing partner and still do and end up our rent when I hand over all the equipment supply that's what we needed uh, for our gallon for again. We have NWR and state agency who step up to the plate and willing to work with us. And uh, I think uh, we should be emphasized a little bit more and thanks should go out to NWR for being there at the table for us when we thought our water was going to be cut off. And I don't think we have to go back too many years in the past where we did that to us on the July day and shot our water off on the notification of the town of our So uh, I understand the board may have changed over in Andover and his new town, town manager and hope that they're happy to continue to be with them for the next half of many years. But uh, I just want to like to thank everybody already for being a partner with the town of our party to be willing to supply us with what we need. Thank you, Thank you, Mr. Delaney. It was my intention before I wrapped up to uh, make sure that I, I paid uh, particular uh, homage to, uh, again, and continue. Again, the MWRA continues to work with us. Uh, again, we have been very upfront and very open with the town of Reading and the MWRA in relation to uh, discussions and negotiations with Andover. And conversely, we've also been very open with the town of Andover, uh, indicating to them that we're going to continue to run in tandem uh, for the MWRA uh, with the MWRA proposal. So, but to Mr. Delaney's point, the MWRA have been fantastic over the last three, three and a half years in dealing with us, working with us, uh, trying to uh, get it effectuated. The town officials in the town of Reading continue up until this past week, we had a meeting with them two weeks ago. Again, understanding that you know, we have to make a, a well-informed decision as to what's in the best interest of the town of North Reading, and they just are fine with us taking the time, uh, putting the delay on the infrastructure uh, improvements down in Reading uh, for up to a year, this was the vote that we took basically, but up to a year, um, they've been fine with it, they understand it, uh, they have said that if they were in the same shoes or seats that we were in, that they would be doing the same thing, so they've been very understanding and very cooperative and conti continue to be very cooperative in relation to the uh, uh, Concord Street connection uh, for, for sewerage. So uh, thank you for bringing it up, it was my intention to do so. Uh, so again, to the MWRA officials, again, many of them who came here to a couple of town meetings, the Reading officials who have been here, and tonight, the Andover officials who are here to, um, again, lend a hand. And again, our relationship uh, with Andover over the last several months, they have been very respectful, uh, they've been good listeners, they've been uh, very receptive to our concerns, and again, some of the uh, issues that Mr. Delaney just alluded to, and um, again, I want to Congratulate them for taking the time, making the effort, and again, uh, providing us again with a second opportunity, you know, second choice uh, to make a good choice for us uh, going forward. And again, it's taken a lot of time, a lot of effort, and uh, again, we appreciate it very much. <coughs>
Further discussion on Article 10? Mr. Atkinson. Yes, thank you. Uh, I would just hope that the study, and I'm leaning to its approving at this point, obviously it gives an optimal solution as opposed to the really lowest cost solution. Uh, I hope the study includes that distinction, because obviously uh, lowest cost would be has an attractive result its own. Uh, the other thing is that I hope that the study is published and the results can be presented to the town in some form before any vote, even by the board of select or by town meeting, so we have a chance to study that. So that would be the proposed date that the study would be ready for us to do and uh, uh, what are we looking at as a time frame when that study would be available for us well, to the, do this. The board of selectmen has, uh, has set a date of, uh, of April 30th to make a determination. In other words, so, uh, so the study would be sometime before that. We're hoping uh, early spring, uh, late winter, early spring, having enough information uh, to make an informed decision. In relation to the costs associated, when we were talking with the town of Andover, we told them it's not the money. It's not the money. You know, we're looking for a long-term solution in a relationship with a party that's going to uh, meet our needs for the foreseeable future and allow for economic growth. Um, when they came forward, we had told them quite clearly, we were all set. We have all the approvals. We have legislative approval from, uh, from the legislature to tie in with the MWRA. We have town meeting approval for all the appropriations necessary for tying in and the infrastructure in Reading. So they were well aware of it. So and again, the board, again, to my colleagues, you know, this has not been an easy decision because we had already gone down. We had already invested almost three years in this MWRA project and almost a million dollars plus $700,000 for the purchase of lands, almost $2 million um, in the MWRA. So uh, we haven't taken it lightly. It wasn't all dollars and cents. It's you know what's going to be the best fit and what's going to meet our needs going forward. And as far as the study goes, it's going to be all an open public discussion uh, with the Board of Selectmen, presentations made, uh, our deliberations will be in public. And again, I anticipate that being some, somewhere in the uh, March time frame. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I have light right in my eyes, but is that you, Catherine? Catherine, we have a move to the question. All those in favor of moving to the question, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay, the question is on the floor. So we have the recommendations as well. All those in favor? I declare you know, a near unanimous vote to move to the question. So on Article 10, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Motion carries. I will declare a two-thirds majority. Ladies and gentlemen, thank for you. our bylaws. Thank you for that, and hope for the same results on the next three, three or four articles. And Mr. Moderator, I have a motion to admit. <clears throat> Mr. Moderator, I move to admit uh, State Senator Bruce Tarr. <laughs> and again, uh, with Senator Tarr coming in, I'd like to acknowledge his uh, assistance and uh, understanding and persistence with us in, uh, in meeting our needs, both with the MWRA and uh, potentially with the future legislation uh, potentially tying in with Andover. It's been a terrific, uh, terrific partner with Representative Jones and uh, certainly appreciate all of your effort and your continued effort and we expect it. <laughs> we got it. Thank you, Senator. On the motion to admit, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimous. Article 11, Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to enter into an intermunicipal agreement with the town of Andover for potable water for a term of up to 99 years on such terms and conditions that the Board determines are in the best interest of the town. And further, to authorize the Board of Selectmen to petition the General Court for a special act authorizing said agreement, provided, however, that the General Court shall be authorized to make ministerial clerical or editorial changes of form only to said bill unless the Board of Selectmen approves the amendments to the bill before enactment by the General Court, and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to approve such amendments as are within the public purpose of this petition.
The recommendation for the Board of Selectmen, Mr. O'Leary. Board of Selectmen unanimously recommend. For the Finance Committee, Mrs. Hobart. Finance Committee unanimously recommends. Discussion. Yes. Okay. Uh, is this part of the chloramine chloride thing again? I just wanted to know what we're using now so that we don't make the right mistake. But th this, this just has to do with the intermunicipal agreement and special legislation to tie in with Andover. As far as the chloramine or chlorine, whatever the, uh, uh, whichever way we go, that will be incorporated as part of the study and what we're going to have to do. And should I be scared? I have two young dogs. No, you should not. Because you should not be afraid. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in. Uh, Mr. Prisco. You're not afraid for your dogs. I'm sorry. No. I'm sorry. I should have asked this question early, but I see the. Through Andover, I didn't see in the presentation. So, Larry, when is town meeting vote for Andover, and how is it tied to our schedule to make sure that everything stays in step? If you could just, Mr. O'Leary, so. as I as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, Andover uh, this past week, the board of selectmen has scheduled their town meeting for the end of January. Um, we have uh, had discussions with the town of Andover uh, as recently as last Friday, expressing our concerns in relation to the timing of it. Um, and we're asking for authorization this evening. Uh, if they can see their way clear, they have it. We were originally planning on having them have a special town meeting in December, uh, but they have other matters that are pending up in Andover that they need to consider at a special town meeting also, and they didn't want to have two scheduled town meetings. Uh, but we can discuss that uh, further, but they do have a scheduled town meeting. Uh, we have been informed that we would be the first article uh, on their special town meeting warrant for consideration. Uh, they do not anticipate, based on a public feedback, any concerns in relation to uh, getting this through their town meeting. I have no reason to believe otherwise. Further discussion? <clears throat> Seeing none, all those in favor of Article 11, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. <laughs> Mr. Yule. Make sure, I'm not sure if I'm correct in my approach here, but I would like to reconsider Article 11, and I would actually like to reconsider Article 10 for this session. If your intent is so that we don't vote on them again, then yes, you could do that. If your intent is to debate them, I can't stop you, but. <laughs> the thing is, I might miss the, there shouldn't be any need. I mean, it was an overwhelming support in relation to the two thirds required. And additionally, it won't be able to come up at a future town meeting, only at this session of town meeting. So, I think, I, I, I think, I, I think the consensus of the board would be, wouldn't necessarily be necessary. Am I correct? We don't find it necessary. Appreciate the gesture. You can make a motion to reconsider. Yes. I can't stop you, but I, I, I'm guess I, I'm not sure why you're trying to make a. I'm doing it to uh, so that the, uh, there's no additional voting time. It can only be. We're, we're trying to we're trying to move forward with the bit. What? 
If the motion to reconsider fails, that's the end of that article. And if we get through the rest of the business, there's not that many left, we'll all be home by the time we take all the reconsideration votes. I, look, bottom line is I can't stop you from making a motion to reconsider. So if you want to make a motion to reconsider, you can make a motion to reconsider, and then I'll explain to everyone how they need to vote. And it's one article at a time. Needed in writing, Jeff. I think, I think we're good. Uh, you you withdraw. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the gesture, though. I still think 99 years is an awful long time to make a vote about it only once. If I, I'll just respond to that briefly. That Mr. O'Leary. We thought that 99 years wasn't long enough. Quite honestly. Uh, okay. Art Article 12, Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town appropriate seven million six hundred thousand six hundred thousand six hundred thousand six hundred eighty thousand dollars. fix that. Six hundred eighty thousand dollars to supplement the amounts appropriated under Article 14 of the June 5th, 2017 town meeting for the purpose of constructing a pump station and providing water system improvements in Reading and North Reading for in connection with, interconnection with MWRA water system, including but not limited to development of design plans for the project, preparation of bid documents, the oversight of permitting, actual construction of such improvements, and for payments of any costs or fees associated with acceptance of the water from the MWRA, including but not limited to the so-called MWRA entrance fee. And to meet this appropriation, the town treasurer with the approval of the Board of Selectmen be authorized to borrow a sum or sums of money pursuant to the MWRA Alternative Entrance Fee Payment Schedule Program, Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 44, Section 7 or 8, or any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the town, therefore, while the bonds issued hereunder shall be the general obligation bonds of the town, it is anticipated that this borrowing shall be repaid from the Water Enterprise Fund. Further, the Board of Selectmen is authorized to pursue federal, state, or other grant funding proceeds of which may be allocated towards said projects. Further, that any premium received by the town upon the sale of any bonds or notes provided, uh, notes approved by this vote, thus any such premium applied to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bonds or notes may be applied to the payment of cost approved by this vote in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 20, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount and further to authorize the Board of Selectmen to execute a contract with the MWRA or other funding entity allowing the town to borrow funds or otherwise make payments of MWRA fees or assessments over a period of more than three years. The recommendation for the Board of Selectmen. Uh, Board of Selectmen unanimously, unanimously recommend. Recommendation for the Finance Committee. The Finance Mr. Hobart. Committee unanimously recommends. Mr. Moderator, just Mr. O'Leary. Further explanation. Again, this is the um, the buy-in fee, seven point six eight million dollars. The uh, MWRA has uh, offered us an opportunity to pay it back over twenty-five years at zero percent interest. So, if we were to go with the MWRA. It's still a $7.68 million uh, buy-in cost, but it's at zero interest starting in year three of 25 years. I just wanted to make the remark that anybody that doesn't feel like this is a good worth of time, then can feel free to leave. You were voted on, we did sign name badges for you or whatever, and if you don't feel like your time's being appropriated good enough, then leave. But these things are important to me. They're important to all the people that came here. And we're going to take as long as it takes to make sure we make the right decision, not the wrong decision. Further discussion on Article 12? The board doesn't disagree. <laughs> we don't disagree. 
Okay. This requires a two-thirds vote. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 13, Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to enter into an intermunicipal agreement with the Town of Reading for potable water for a term of up to 99 years on such terms and conditions that the Board determines are in the best interest of the town, and further to authorize the Board of Selectmen to petition, petition the General Court for a special act authorizing said agreement, provided, however, that the General Court shall be authorized to make ministerial, clerical, and editorial changes of form only to said bill, unless the Board of Selectmen approves amendments to the bill before enacted by the General Court, and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to approve such amendments as are in the public purpose of this petition. The recommendation for the Board of Selectmen, Mr. O'Leary. Board of Selectmen unanimously recommend. For the Finance Committee, Mrs. Hilbert. The Finance Committee unanimously recommends. Discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Motion carries. Article 14, Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Moderator, I move to authorize the Board of Selectmen to acquire by gift, purchase, or eminent domain on such terms and conditions as it deems appropriate, easements or other interest in land for water supply purposes in certain parcels of land in the town of North Reading, located on Mill Street and identified as North Reading Assessor's Map 21, parcels 1 and 7, and in certain parcels of land in the town of Reading, located on Mill Street and identified as Reading Assessor's Map 56, parcels 101 and 106, said parcels of land being owned by the town of Reading and further to authorize the Board of Selectmen to petition the General Court for special legislation authorizing the town to acquire such interest in said land to provide for the construction of a water main and related facilities within such lands to provide potable water to the town of North Reading, which authorization may include such approval as is required under Article 97 of the amendments of the Massachusetts Constitution, notwithstanding the provisions of any applicable general or special law to the contrary including but not limited to section 16 of chapter 30b of general laws provided the general court may make clerical or editorial changes to form only to the bill submitted by the selectmen unless the selectmen approve amendments to the bill before enactment by the general court or what it will do in relation thereto all as specified in article 14 is printed in the warrant Recommendation for the Board of Selectmen, Mr. O'Leary. Please, please do not shout out. You wait to be recognized to speak. The Board of Selectmen recommends unanimously. For the Finance Committee, Mrs. Herbert. Finance Committee recommends. Once again, Mr. Moderator, these uh, parcels in question are both uh, in conservation, both in the town of North Reading and Reading, and are required for um, the river crossing, the Ipswich River at Mill Street. And because it, we will be disturbing some wetlands, it's going to be requiring special legislation uh, to enact the crossing. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. Further discussion? No. Need a drink of water, Bill? <laughs> um, if you move ahead with the special legislation that takes out of conservation, what's to prevent that then being used for something else if you do not take that under your we, we would not file the legislation, seek legislation, unless and until we are going with the MWRA. So once the board makes a determination by April, we're going to go MWRA, we'll file the legislation. If we don't go MWRA, we will not file the legislation. Nothing is going to happen 
unless and until we decide to go MWRA specifically. Okay. Further discussion? I, I think he had his conservation hat on there. You think? I think. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor of Article 14, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, your support this evening. It's going to bring us uh, much closer to, uh, to a final decision. And again, welcome to our friends from Andover. Thank you for coming this evening. Thank you for your hard work. And, uh, we look forward to uh, future negotiations with you. And you're more than welcome. You're more than welcome to spend the rest of the evening with us. Article 15, Mr. Schultz. Moderator, I move to amend the Code of North Reading General Bylaws by adding a new chapter, 147, Social Host Responsibility, and further to amend the list of fines under Chapter 1, General Provisions 1-B.B, uh, Subsection 3, Violations and Penalties to include those specified under Chapter 147, all as specified in Article 15 of the Warrant. Recommendation for the Board of Selectmen. Mr. Schultz. The Board of Selectmen recommends. Does the Finance Committee wish to make a recommendation? Mrs. Hovitt. Finance. Finance Committee will make a recommendation after the presentation. How long is the presentation? Just a few moments. I know uh, Ms. Luckowitz has something as well. If you need more than five, you need to take a leave of the meeting. Okay. Mr. Schultz. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, just real brief, uh, we gave our students a survey about alcohol and drug use and, and prescription drug use as well. And it was fascinating to see our senior class last year reported that 51.8% of them used alcohol within the last 30 days. Um, that, the national average is 33.2. So we are, if my math is right in my head, probably about 70% higher than the national average as far as seniors in high school using alcohol in the past month. That was eye-opening to us as a board, and uh, I know Chief Murphy needs some tools to, for him and his folks to do their job, and we're trying to pass a civil bylaw. This is civil, it's not criminal. Essentially, that any house that knowingly gives alcohol to minors, the keyword is knowingly, could be hit with a civil penalty. Um, we feel it's incumbent to protect our youth. We also feel it's incumbent for parents to know what houses are having this problem, so you can judge where to send your kids to. Um, our Community Impact Team, Amy Luckwitz, is going to speak now to the, uh, basically to the, the study behind this and to why we feel this is something that we need as a town. Amy Luckwitz. Thank you, everybody. Again, my name is Amy Luckwitz. I'm the Director of Youth Services, and part of my job is to oversee the Federal Drug-Free Communities Grant. And uh, tonight I'm actually happy to report that the town of North Reading, through the community impact team, has received approval for our second year of the federal, um, the federal Drug Free Communities Grant, which actually kicked into effect just yesterday. The Drug Free Communities Grant has very specific goals. You see them listed up top. It aims to use tested strategies to reduce youth substance use and, youth substance use and prevent that use from even starting. Now starting our second year, we're looking heavily at policies and social norms that can prevent substance and alcohol use among youth. I'd also like to highlight that we base our work and recommendations heavily on the seven strategies for community change, and I have an overview of all of those strategies posted at the CIT website. The uh, details and exclusions related to this bylaw are posted in your warrant, so instead of reading that to you, I would 
I'd like to let you know why the community impact team has proposed this bylaw. First, it provides us an opportunity to have an open and honest conversation and to provide educational opportunities to our youth, families, and to our community. Over the past year, our coalition has worked very hard on data collection. And we know that adults, sometimes over older siblings, are providing alcohol for youth in and out of the home. Also through our student survey taken this past Friday, as Mr. Schultz indicated, 51%, 51 51.8% of our high school seniors last year reported using alcohol in the past 30 days. That's more than half. And again, it's above the national average. In addition, the number one location where youth said that they use is at a friend's house. We have further determined that this is not a police problem. It's not a youth services problem. It's not a family problem or a school problem. This is a community norms problem. We've talked to in and out of state communities who have implemented similar social host bylaws with great success. In fact, it has been the number one recommended strategy for changing social norms and consequences around this issue. It's important to know that this bylaw doesn't just address alcohol, but it addresses drugs as well. And again, we see this as an opportunity for education and again, as a proven strategy that has worked in other communities and recommended by prevention specialists. Two weeks ago, I completed the National Coalition Academy. This social host bylaw is, is viewed as so effective that they brought in a research specialist, Dr. Mark Wolfson, to speak to its importance. This is about prevention, it's not about enforcement. The strategy, in partnership with others we intend to pursue, is proven to reduce youth alcohol use. The numbers are showing us that we have to act, and we have to act now. Finally, as I mentioned, we see this as an opportunity to provide some education, I'd like to refer you to our website for more information. As always, I'd like to say that if anyone you know of any age needs help with recovery, please either visit our resource page or contact me personally. My information is posted um, right up top there. Thank you very much. Discussion. Amy? I'll answer the great question we received. Um, approval is year to year, but we've basically been uh, approved for five years. It's 125000 a year, four or five years. At the end of five years, we're going to have the opportunity, if it's still funded by the federal government, to apply for a further five years, uh, bringing the total to $1.25 million. Uh, I can tell you that our budget has a heavy line item related to training and um, staffing of this project. The coalition is mostly volunteer-based, though. Are you going to put your grant money towards the bathrooms? I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. Well, they just keep on asking for all this money to go to these school bathrooms that I keep hearing about in the last like four or five days in the last couple of years. So uh, instead of using our money, would you like to use your money for it? I'm sorry, I really don't understand the question. That, Are you referring that, to the That's not, you know what? You can take the microphone. That, that's not applicable to this discussion. It's grant money for a specific purpose. Mr. Vino. Please do not speak from your chair or I'll have you removed. That's only the second time in 13 years I've had to say that. Mr. Vino. Thank you, Mr. Smart. Joe Vino, 11 Rock Street. Um, I don't want to say I'm opposed to this, but it looks like we're passing a law that we are going to law for. I do sort of understand the reason for it here, but I just, I just don't know if we want to pass another law because it's already a lot against us. But I did have one question. Under the penalties, the first offense is $100 plus $100 police fee. The second offense is $200 plus $100 police fee. The third offense is $300 fine, no police fee. 
Why do we let them off the hook when it's getting worse? I mean, it, it, I just have a problem with this. Thank you. Mr. Schultz. I, I can answer the first part of the question. Mr. Schultz. Um, Mr. Vina, it's a good question. We discussed that as far as we already there's already a criminal statute on the book statewide as far as underage drinking. The problem is the standard for criminal prosecution and a civil prosecution is much different. And we want to give our police department the tools. This is a civil violation, so different than a parking ticket. This is not a criminal violation. So the standard is much less, and we want our police to be able to enforce this, not so much as we want our police out enforcing against our citizens in the sense that we want this to be a de deterrent. We found it very striking that our underage drinking for seniors was 18% over the national average. I personally found that to be very shocking. I, I, not naive to think that kids aren't drinking, but I didn't think we were that much higher. And I think as a community, when you see that, and these are kids self-reporting, so I would even go on to say the number's probably even higher. But it, to me, that's an issue. I don't think we're doing our job as a board of selectmen if we just ignore those numbers. Mr. Klein, Darren Klein, Town Council. Uh, Darren Klein, Town Council, through the moderator. Uh, to answer the, the second part of your question, uh, Mr. Vino, uh, under Chapter 40, Section 21, the most that we can impose is a civil fine of $300. That is why on the third offense, the $100 recruitment fee cannot be, be included. Mr. Vino. Additionally, what I would like to make is once the adult and set beverage or drug to a minor, it's a criminal violation. You can change it to civil, but it's a criminal violation already. Mr. Schultz. To speak of that, we're not changing anything. It's still a criminal violation, but it also would be a civil violation. Chief Murphy. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Mike Murphy, Police Chief. Uh, Mr. Vino, regarding whether it's a criminal offense or not, we've had difficulty processing these at court. Um, with, with this particular bylaw, this is going to give a, it's a deterrent, essentially. This is more education as opposed to enforcement for us as a police department. Um, one example I can give you is we had a particular incident where there were two adults involved that actually participated with the youth in drinking the alcohol by host, and hosted the party as well. Uh, we went to court on that particular case and essentially all the youth were given their Fifth Amendment privileges. Nobody was able to testify. So essentially, a lot of the resources that we put into it um, ended in a dismissal. But we're not looking to charge people criminally. What we're looking to do is engage the community in an educational forum. By This is one of the strategies that um, Amy has, has come to the community impact team, which I fully support. What it's going to do is engage us in a conversation monthly, weekly, whatever it takes, we can't do that with this criminal statute because I don't think that people are going to sit and listen to us saying that you could be charged criminally all the time. We don't want to have a heavy hand in this. What we do want is to engage the community. Um, essentially, we want adults to really have a conversation with their kids and, and for other adults to have a conversation with other adults when, when their children are visiting other homes. So um, I, I welcome this bylaw as an opportunity for all of us, not just the police department, community impact team, youth services, board of selectmen, everybody to engage in a conversation so that we can lower those numbers. Because clearly the criminal statute is not helping us because those numbers are higher than they should be. Mr. Yule. Thank you, Mr. First of all, the, the uh, community impact team uh, should be commended for the efforts that they put into this. Uh, it's not uh, an easy thing to do. It takes a lot of sincerity and, and good effort uh, to go forward. I'm just not sure this is the best way or the best approach, as I noted in my letter to the editor. Uh, listening to what I was hearing this evening, uh, first of all, I don't know how anybody can be surprised that teenagers are drinking at the levels that they are drinking. They've been doing it for years. Okay, I've gone through my teenage years, I've gone through my high school years, and I can tell you what was going on then, what's going on now. So it's not a new thing at this point. But I, I, 
Chief Murphy. 
Chief Murphy. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Just to respond to Mr. Yule, um, this bylaw is not going to give the police the authority to enter somebody's home. We already have that authority through the United States Constitution. So if there is underage drinking, it's exigent circumstances. There is a huge safety problem with underage drinking. Um, so this bylaw, I just want to clarify, this bylaw will not give us the authority on its own to enter anybody's home. Um, and just to clarify, this also is not just alcohol. This covers illegal drugs as well, which is increasing as, as well based upon the numbers that we do have. But I do want to just clarify. The fact that there's a criminal statute in place, it has not been as effective as a police department. It's very difficult to prosecute those cases. Um, very easy to charge somebody, but to actually prosecute and get the message across as to why we're doing it, it's very difficult. W there is an opportunity for us at the local level with this bylaw to essentially put people into a diversion program. I have no plans to announce who was charged civilly, because we don't do that on any civil violations, to the community. That's not the goal here. The goal would be for us to make a phone call, have, have a sit down with people that we cannot otherwise do with the criminal statute. Because once they go into the criminal system, the police department and their relationship ends once they're arraigned. So I look at this as an opportunity for, for the police department to engage the community um, as opposed to just essentially um, a criminal statute. The studies that, that Amy referred to as well, um, have, this, it's proven that being able to charge civilly is more effective than charging criminally. I've talked to the Melrose chief. They have um, this bylaw in place. He has told me it has, has, he, they've seen a significant decrease in the amount of pies that they've seen on, on a weekly basis. Uh, that's all we can go on at this point. We don't know whether or not this will be effective, but our numbers are high. Whether some people think they're high or not, we think as public safety, the professionals that the town has hired, looking at these numbers, they are high. So we're looking to take some of those numbers down by implementing not only this strategy, but other strategies so that we can, uh, uh, like I said, remove, uh, minimize these numbers so that we can, um, so the, our students, our, our young folks, they, you're right, they are going to go out and drink on the weekends. What we're trying to do is, as responsible adults, to not host those parties and, and maybe, you know, have some um, alternatives for their, for their, um, their kids. So that's the, the essentially why I'm supporting this pilot. Mr. Yo, you have rules. Mrs. The others, you have spoken, others, excuse me. Mr. Yule, I just called on Mrs. Bailey. Thank you. You, you, can, you can wait your turn. Others have been waiting to speak. Mrs. Bailey. Rita? Uh, 
my age, it was easier to walk down the stairs than up the stairs. Uh, I think that uh, what Amy and the Chief said about the education and prevention uh, is so important and the fact that it's community we're talking about. I can tell my children what to do in my house and I can't tell them what they're gonna do in somebody else's house because I'm gonna trust, you know, I trust an awful lot of people. Love everybody, trust you all. But hopefully now if you do understand that if they do it in your house and they get caught, that there is now a consequence. Uh, I'm a little, um, a little disturbed that since my kids were young and they went to homes and I assumed everything was okay because these people were very uh, educated and seemed very, very proper and they would come home and I would find out that they were drinking and you know, smoking pot over there. I'm not saying the parents were handing it to them, but I'm also saying the parents obviously knew what was going on because if you take the keys from these kids that step into your house. Now, if those parents wanted to call me and say, I'd love to have the kids over my house tonight, but I just want you to know they're gonna be drinking and you know, they can smoke pot because I think it's okay. Uh, I come from an Italian background and the kids, you know, the kids and the parents might have drank at that early age. Well, if somebody allows their children to drink at that early age, and my kids aren't used to it and go over there and drink, there are going to be consequences for that child. And lately there's a, I don't know how many of you have the kids in college now, and we're hoping to, you know, one of the things uh, Mr. Yule mentioned about education is I can tell you how many meetings that the CIT, that new services have put on uh, about addiction, about drugs, about everything else, and we're speaking to the choir because when we have it, it's the parents of the people that might be on our committee. It's not 400 or 500, it's not like when people are voting to spend a lot of money on taxes, this place is packed. When we try to put a forum on about drugs and alcohol and what to do, there's about this many people or less at it. So the only way you're gonna be able to, I think, protect your children as much as you can is that if we alert the community, there is a problem. And after a while, if you find out that this person's house allows kids to drink and do drugs, then the parents can make the intelligent decision not to let the kids go, or to let them go. But I think it's a, a great policy, and some of you have dr been drinking at an early age. You know, Mr. Yule, you said a lot of, which is true, a lot of kids drink before they're of age, up until now. And when my kids go to somebody's house and the parents take the keys, one of my children thinks that's cool because the parent is a great guy and he's funny and he's nice and isn't that cool. And when he comes home and I have to deal with it, I'm old, I'm not cool. So this parent must be right because he was able to let them drink and let them smoke. So we can only control what happens in our house. I think this policy, is, this uh, uh, law, if we put it in place, is something that might help the parents and give a, a little teeth to this so at least you know when your children are going out whose house they're going to. Thank you. Mr. Schultz. Yes, the fees go to the general fund receipts. The fees incurred that we would receive would go to the general fund receipts. Mr. Wait, before you before you go, Mr. Gilberto, did you want to respond to that? 
Yes, and the finance director can certainly correct me if I misstate it, but these would be treated as departmental revenue, no different than any other fee or fine that comes in from a different department through an enforcement action. And again, it would be treated as a receipt for the town's general fund. So I guess the other question would be, where are you getting the money? Where's the education part that's coming in? Where are the community part coming in? Sure, I can Amy? do that. Amy, go ahead. Thank you. Um, again, we have that $125,000 a year. Uh, this is year two. Um, so I've been here four years, and in that time, and I'll have the chief help correct me, I believe we've held about five or six educational forums on this type of issue, and as um, Rita Mullen had mentioned, they're very poorly attended, so we're looking to take another, another avenue, and that's to start in the schools. The revenue, or the money to pay for that is going to come from the Drug Free Communities Program. We also have some reserve funds in the Community Impact Team to help fund that. Um, the good news is that those educational programs have um, either a very low cost or very high cost, and we kind of look in the middle to balance those out. And just lastly, I want to actually have the parents attend those as the education part. Of I'm sorry, say that again? No, is it the parents instead of just paying the fees? They oh. should probably attend those <laughs> as part of the um, consequence. Chief Murphy, you want to respond to that? Just to respond, that was one of the points I was making. That's what we would like to see happen. We're going to be able to, the officer, if he does issue a citation, would be able to engage and, you know, follow up with the families and the students as well. Um, and just on, the, on a side note, this does not mean that we have to find $100. We have, there's many bylaws that are on the books that we do speak with people to resolve the issue before actually issuing a fine. Pat, sorry. Mr. Yule. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. First of all, I want to be quite frank here, and I appreciate your approach towards me on this moderator on this issue. Okay? I was being addressed in something that I said. I thought I had the right to respond to that person. Any debate that you usually allow, and you have done that in the past. So, Mr. Yule. Okay. Uh, one of the questions I have here is, and the biggest question I have is, how are you actually going to enforce this? Okay. I think it would help people understand better if they could understand how it's going to be enforced. It just so happened the other day, I was watching a movie, just clicking through the channel, and it had to do with young people drinking, doing drugs, having parties at home, and the police responding. Okay? And in the movie, what they did was they were able to respond because they got a call from a neighbor saying that there's a lot of work going on next door, and so the police went and uh, went to that house. So that, that's an important question, I think, that, that the community needs to understand, is how are you going to enforce this? Thank you. 
Chief Murphy, did you want to respond? Thank you. Um, we would enforce this bylaw similar to any law that's in place. So we would respond, we would gather the facts and take appropriate action. Um, I don't want to say it's minor, but if it was just a violation of the bylaw, then you know, we would probably issue or engage them in conversation and, and conduct a follow-up either through one of my detectives or um, through the community impact team. If it's a more egregious act where we have people injured, um, sent to the hospital, which does happen, then we would probably go the criminal route. So I guess it all depends on the circumstances that are involved. Um, but again, we're, we're, we're looking at this as a deterrent more than an enforcement action. Mr. Yule. Yes. If, if, if the bio is enacted, that means that someone is serving alcohol to minors in the house. That's automatically a criminal act. Isn't that correct? Mr. Schultz. Um, to use a football analogy, the difference between a criminal and a civil prosecution is in a criminal case, it's beyond a reasonable doubt. You have to get in the end zone. On a civil case, you have to get over the 50 yard line. Now, as soon as the chief brings a criminal charge, when they lawyer up and they Mirandize, they're not talking. So it makes it really difficult for his folks to prosecute these cases. On a civil case, it's a much lower standard. There's no Miranda rights that apply. And you can actually, the, the chief and his folks can talk to people. And they're just trying to educate and deter. They're not trying to put people in jail. This is not, again, this is a civil, no different than a speeding ticket. That's what this is. But we think, as a community, I would like to think we don't have an underage drinking problem. But when I look at this survey, and we're like 70% over the national average, I think as a community, we'd be derelict if we didn't do something about this. And I think it's important we protect our youth. Our youth don't have a voice. We speak for them. We have to protect our youth. And just look at these numbers. I, I didn't want to believe these numbers when I saw them, but they are what they are. We have a drinking problem with our youth in this town. And I think as a community, we have a duty to address this. My, Mike, I see you up there. There's others, okay? So, so sorry, I see you. Mr. Yule. Just one thing. I happen to agree with you. We have to do something. The question is, is this the best route? That's really what the question is. And I know you've done your studies and so on, and I respect that and I appreciate that. Okay? I just don't believe it's the best route. And, and that's why I'm just concerned. That's why I asked about enforcement. I believe it's a criminal uh, uh, act that occurs once you try to enforce this by law as a civil case. It's still a criminal act, one way or the other. And it should be uh, going to the maximum of the law. But that's just one opinion. Thank you, everyone. Chief Warner. Hi, Bill Warner, 12 Inch Road, Sam Fire Chief, I'm also a member of the community impact team. I look at this a little differently than everybody in the room. If it saves one life, it's worth it. If it saves one life, it's worth it. I respect all your opinions, I respect your rights, but remember, people get killed in drunk accidents all the time. Saves one life. It's worth it. So it sounds like we're making money off the people. And um, I just want to say I drink, I use pot, I graduated college, which is better than a lot of you, or at least maybe some of you watching. So it doesn't just make you a piece. Mike. Michael Jeffrey on Channel 44 Burroughs Road. I'd like to move the question. Okay, we've moved to the question. All those in favor of moving to the question, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. On the article, Article 15, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Oh.
I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot the Finance Committee recommendation. Time passed. Age. The Finance Committee recommends. I'll, I'll do the vote again. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Article 16, Mr. Schultz. I move to pass over Article 16 as printed in the warrant. Recommendation for the Board of Selectmen, uh, Mr. Schultz. Uh, the Board of Selectmen recommends to pass over. For the Finance Committee. Mrs. Hobart. The Finance Committee recommends passing over. Further discussion? See, I'm not going to call on you after your last bit of language. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Article 17, Mr. Schultz. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move to appropriate from free cash the sum of $150,000 for negotiation, mediation, and or litigation with PMA Consultants, LLC, and Doran Whittier, Architects, Inc., concerning the secondary school building project and all costs incidental related thereto, as specified in Article 17 as printed in the warrant. I would, I would respectfully ask, excuse me, Greta, I'd like to respectfully ask that you leave the meeting. That was completely inappropriate. Recommendation for the Board of Selectmen. The Board of Selectmen recommends. For the Finance Committee, Mrs. Hobart. The Finance Committee recommends. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Article 18, Mr. Schultz. Mr. Moderator, I move to transfer the care, custody, and control of a parcel of land located at 8 Devons Road and identified as Map 42, Parcel 128, from the tax title custodian for tax collection purposes to the Board of Selectmen for general municipal purposes, including the purpose of conveyance as specified in Article 18, as printed in the warrant. Recommendation for the Board of Selectmen, Mr. Schultz. Mr. Moderator, the Board of Selectmen recommends. For the Finance Committee, Mrs. Hobart. The Finance Committee recommends. Further discussion? Mr. McGrath. Mr. Schultz. I would say both in the sense that it's a, it's a parcel adjacent to abutters that are interested in the property. It's also buildable to answer your question. Further discussion. This involves land. It requires a two-thirds vote. All those in favor, please say aye. Opposed? Unanimous. 
Article 19, Mr. Schultz. Oh, Mr. Prisco, I'm sorry. Thank you, Andrew. Mr. Moderator, I move to authorize the Board of Selectmen to acquire, by purchase, gift, or eminent domain, fee, or lesser interest in all or portions of the property located at 100 Lowell Road and identify as North Reading Assessor Map 14, Parcel 9, for public water supply purposes as specified in Article 19 as printed in the warrant. Recommendation for the Board of Select, Mr. Prisco. Board of Select recommends. For the Finance Committee, Mrs. Herbert. Finance Committee recommends. Mr. Prisco. So just quickly on this particular article, there's a current water easement on 100 Lowell Road. And today, that easement is written for the use for 100 Low Road in town-owned use. Going through the acquisition for 104 Low Road and soon hopefully down the road, 102 Low Road, we need to just change the easement to allow access for public water to go up to those two parcels as well. We've been waiting quite a while to get that completed <coughs> through the legal process and it's taking some time and we are trying to close uh, here at the end of November so if we can't get it completed through uh, the legal channels, then we're gonna, we'd like your authorization this evening to give us the authority to go ahead and take that easement in eminent domain so we can go ahead and uh, have access to the water main that goes through there so we can have tie into 104 and 102 Lowell Road. And that's the main purpose of this. We're hopeful though, we're pretty hopeful. We've heard that the easement has been the updated easement has been uh, looked at and will be signed, but we've been waiting quite a while. So we just want this as a worst case scenario. Scenario, We want to have this in our pocket as a tool in the event we need it as we get closer to November 29th. Mr. Yule. Thank you, Mr. Uh, is there a tenant or property owner for this? Mr. Prisco. Thank you, Mr. Martorell. So the easement today, as it's written, is for 100 Lowell Road, which is Edgewood properties, in town-owned land. Now that we're selling the town-owned land, we want to put the new property owners on the easement. We need to get the property owner at 100 Lowell Road to agree to the change of the easement, which we've understood they are in agreement, but we have not received the document. As we get closer to the closing, if we don't have that document, we can't close. So we want this tool of eminent domain to take that easement away from them through the eminent domain process, and then we'll have rights and access for 104 and 102 Lowell Road. Mr. Yule. Yes, doesn't that uh, weaken the volume of those rights or power? On the property owner, they, they seem to be made vulnerable if we do pass this. Mr. Prisco. We're just trying to get water, portable water, out to these, these parcels. It doesn't take anything away from anyone. Uh, it just gives us more control now to make sure the proper water line is accessible for 104 Lower Road so they can construct their buildings and have water service to each one of their units. That's what we're trying to accomplish. That's all we're trying to do. I feel very, very confident that we're not going to need to take this aggressive action, but in the event we can't get the cooperation, uh, then this is the action we'd like to take. And it's not that big of a deal. It's, we're just taking control of the easement. Right now, there's a mutual easement that allows the town to use it for town-owned use, but we're selling our use. And we want to turn that, and that's why we're trying to put the proper name on the easement so the right people for 104 and 102 have access to water. Thank you. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. 
Mr. Prisco, I'll entertain one more motion. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move to adjourn this meeting, CDD. On the motion to adjourn, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries.